Greetings, epic adventure seekers. Welcome to your guide to demystifying your world. I'm Allie Bierman, and you are listening to Let's Get Metaphysical Connecting Heart and Mind. Today, we have a very special gift for you. You met Bupinder Bansal when we explored the lifelong question, who are you in the world? And if you have not listened to that episode yet, or even if you have, I encourage you to go back and listen again, not only to refresh your memory, but because each time you listen to something, you hear something that you didn't hear before because you're in a different place in your life than you were before. And that link will also be in the show notes. But today, Bupinder's here to share what I see. If I were asking the question, is there an antidote to the high divorce rate? And to all the bitterness, it's really shocking to me how many people tell me that they had such a bad divorce that they were so deeply hurt that this one person went off and said, I wish I had broken glass and I could go back and cut them all up. And I thought, holy mackerel, this is somebody who has a very interesting picture and probably not seeing her part in the relationship. And unfortunately, that kind of thing gets encouraged. So I know that that's a choice that people are making. And Pinder will definitely enlighten you to the true meaning of a loving relationship. As a brief reminder, he's a very unique blend of spirituality and leadership coaching in the corporate world and a shining example, in my opinion, of a life well lived. So let's jump right in and open some eyes some hearts, some minds, and my honored friend. I get emotional because you're such a guiding light to me. Welcome back to the show, Bupinder. Thank you, Ali, for that uh, beautiful introduction. I'm just humbled by your words and also uh, setting the stage for this opportunity where we can collectively open our minds and hearts to a better life, to more harmonious relationships with ourselves and also with the people in our life. Right. That's, I couldn't wait to have you back because relationships, it's not I'm in this relationship with my partner. I'm in this relationship at work. I'm in this relationship with my children. But it's who are you as that one constant person? And all your relationships are actually the same. Is that the uh, feeling? Would you share that? Yeah, let me. Someone asked me lately, uh, this person is on this spiritual journey. Um, what state? What are the different stages of enlightenment? And my simple answer was: the quality of our relationships tells us at what stage of awakening we are at. It's very simple. Wow! And this person is a, a medical doctor, and. He physically, he's, he, he could be a lot better in a, uh, in a physical shape, not because he needs to look better and so on. It's just having this body available to you in, the, in its peak performance. So the first relationship, the relationship could have different meaning for different people. I know we will come to the relationship with our significant other, but... If I don't have a good relationship with myself, starting off with my physical body, what I'm feeding this body, why I'm feeding what I'm feeding this body, is telling me something about me. I'm, I'm not about saying the different body shapes are bad. It's more about how 
much energy I carry during the day? Am I tired most of the day or am I energetic? That's where I'm coming from. All shapes are good shapes. It's not talk, I'm not talking about the shape. It is very similar if there is a, um, a car that runs on petrol or gas and I'm putting diesel fuel in that, I'm compromising the performance. So it starts off, all relationships starts with the relationship I have with myself, with my physical body. And the second is mind, an amazing tool that humans have, which is the most evolved. It works against us sometimes. When it's working against us, that relationship is poor. It is not balanced. And this mind produces thoughts of worry and fear. But at the same time, this mind, the tool, can also produce joy, bliss, and happiness. And that will tell us what kind of relationship we have with ourselves. A lot of time, when this tool called the mind is working against us, it produces lack, lack, and that translates into fear, as I said, worry, what will happen, afraid of change, so on and so on. And I was at that place in my life when I got married. And I was looking for what I was missing from my partner. Mm -hmm. But I had no clue what relationships mean. And this is more than 20 years back. So I started on the wrong footing. And that led to a strained relationship with my wife. And it actually led to a divorce. But I had no clue why things were happening the, the way they were happening. Today I can say it was because I did not have a good relationship with me. I had lost that paradise. The paradise when mind is able to produce thoughts of um, bliss, joy, and peace. So now what I was doing, I was looking for that paradise outside of me. And when someone was not giving me that, I was holding them responsible for what I was experiencing. So it was, it's very similar if I have an injury, say I have a, um, on, on my forehead and I'm trying to um, uh, put a dressing or take care of the wound, standing in front of the mirror, I'm applying the ointment, uh -huh. everything on the mirror. And that was me when I could not understand what does a relationship mean. It starts with me, what kind of relationship I have with myself. And if my relationship with my mind, where it works against me, is not good, not healthy, it's going to impact me and also the people around me. That was my big learning um, through that broken relationship. But there's a better part to the story. We'll get to that, uh, which didn't, and the divorce was the, not the last point in the relationship. And that was such a, a brilliant insight because one of the first things I teach if I'm working with someone in a broken relationship is that's why people come together exactly what you said. I have these wounds and you're going to heal them for me. I was married to 32 for 32 years to someone who kept saying, you're not making me happy. And I'd say to him, I'm not supposed to make you happy. That's your job. I'm supposed to make me happy. And he never got that. It took me a long time to get to that point, but he never got that. And so it, it didn't make sense for our marriage to continue. And when I learned all, all the things that were so clear to you that you're about to share with us, it's like, that's why I teach about relationships now, because I have really great clarity 
I know who I'm looking for when I date, and I know who I'm not looking for when I date. But I didn't know this stuff when I got married, just as you did. Yeah, we. I, I think we learn through our experiences, but sometimes we don't learn through our experiences, and then we repeat the same story again, where we always find a villain in our story. <laughs> It's perfect. <laughs> Sadly. Um, but the villain sometimes is of our making. I, I, again, I'm, I'm no way endorsing someone who's ab abusive verbally or physically. That's not what I'm trying to say. Right. Um, we're keeping that because sometimes you could be careful when you take the information. Don't go apply it to every situation. Every situation is unique. And, and we got to be very careful with that. And you use the word he healing. So what does a what does a healing look like? So I just use the example of the human mind. Mm. In fact, it's a amazing piece of tool, I call it. And the power of this mind is very obvious. Humans, though they're not physically as strong as many animals, but they're able to control them. It means we have better minds than any of the species on planet Earth. Even though we have the most evolved mind, it is not fully evolved yet. It can do a lot better, which was it can produce peace, joy, and bliss 24-7. That is a healed mind. That's a healed state. Versus when it produces toxicity. Even before we spit that at someone else or someone spits at us, it's within us. That is the core of every relationship. In fact, that healed mind is also called wholeness. Being whole means now I am happy within myself and I have a commitment with myself to be happy all the times. So now you can try to make me unhappy. Why should I become unhappy? because I'm respecting myself. I'm holding myself in this place I call my own paradise. Why shall I leave my paradise at any cost? But I have to find this paradise first. I have to find this healed self first. And that should then that should become the foundation of our relationships. And if this foundation is weak, there's a huge risk. The risk is the failure of the relationship. So for me, in the phase one of my relationship with my wife, it ended in divorce. But then the story goes further. That was a time for me to reflect back and I was looking for answers. I would read any book that will help me find my answers. I started doing it every possible meditation I could put my hands on. And there was a transformation um, <clears throat> when we were separated for a few years, but we remarried in 2012. And that was when I realized, actually, I had a broken relationship with myself. And I was putting, I was pointing at others for that lost paradise within me. I was asking, I was expecting, or I was using force at times for them to deliver what was missing inside me, or using, uh, let's call it emotional blackmailing at times, or when we have the influence or the power, we try to do that also. We will receive um, that from outside, but when we don't have that within us, it's not going to last forever. And that was my key learning. And I came up with three-step process called inspire, heal, and empower. Means when we share stories, we can draw inspiration from them. It's a choice. The second part is a healing, which I just, just described. Let's call, call it finding that lost paradise within ourselves. And the third is empowerment. Empowerment means I'm going to stay in this place 
where I am fully comfortable, I am peace, I am joy, I am blessed at no cost, no matter what someone else is doing, I'm going to leave my paradise. That is empowerment. And from there, when we share our stories, others have the choice to get inspired, then get healed, then get to this place, which is solid foundation for every relationship in our life. That's um that says it all. And I love that you explain what you meant by empowered because my impression of how most people are using empowered today is okay, someone who's getting a divorce, they're going to be empowered and they're going to win the situation instead of looking for a win-win. And it's somebody said that to me recently. Uh, she's also a relationship coach. And I said, no, that's not how I work. That's not how my mind works. Because mm -hmm. she was about, let's be in control here. And well, let's be the one who dishes it out instead of the victim and sleep. <laughs> so I'm glad that you're out there and looking forward to your book and your continued teachings to really explain that difference for people. Yeah. Again, again um, everyone operates from their level of awareness. Okay. So what, what we, what we, 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 we are not here to judge anyone. But what, what we're just saying is be careful who you listen to. If it's not helping you bloom within yourself, then walk away. It's your choice. And, and until a person is not healed fully, they are not able to heal someone else. Again, healing doesn't mean I can do it for you. I can only inspire you. But you have a clear choice. And each one of us have the choice and the freedom. But sometimes we are told we don't have that. No matter if you think someone is controlling you, no, it is your own mind. Your mind can be your alibi or your mind can be your worst enemy. Mind means thoughts. And we spend the most time with our thoughts. If the quality of, of, of our thoughts does not give us the comfort, then we need to, before pointing finger at someone else, look at ourselves. It means look at this mind. And healing simply means this mind becomes beautiful. A person is beautiful when the mind is beautiful. And this beauty of the mind does not age. The body ages. So that is telling me, if I identify myself with the physical body, my beauty is not everlasting. But if I identify with beautiful thoughts, my beauty actually enhances as my body grows old and people will still love me. Those who really understand what love is. Love is when you sit in the company of someone you are totally accepted the way you are. Period. No questions asked. What led you to remarry? Because it can't just be on your part. It has to be your wife also. Yeah, I'm 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 grateful to her for when I yeah, I, I call it the, the first was the arranged marriage, as it happens in our generation uh, at that time. Mm -hmm. Um, we did it after our, our parents introduced us, so we didn't go find each other. But in the second one, um, I we call it a, a love marriage because nobody was ready to um, um, support us really for a good reason. Because normally, when relationships fail, when people come together, the same pattern repeats. So nobody wanted to put money into this bank. So we call it a love marriage. <laughs> so I think it was a love for each other that was still there, but during the, the situations, because at the core we knew each other, but then this personalities that popped up 
uh, was more of a reaction from both of side, both the sides. And then I did a lot of work. The, the question, uh, let me tell you a story. I did a workshop or a seminar. It was titled uh, Inspire, Heal, and Empower. And it was about forgiveness. And someone from the audience asked me the question, if you have forgiven your wife, means you hold no grudges, you don't blame her, then it means you love her, so why you are not with her? Hmm. And that, I started digging that, and that's where I found out it was me who was looking for something from her and there was no agreement where she has said to me, I'm going to give you A, B, C, D, E, F. The agreement actually is I will be I, you will be you, and together we will walk this path. And when I realized, Bhupin, that there was something missing inside me and I was expecting others to deliver, I, I couldn't sit still. It shook me it is like a meditation so the only way to come out of that was pick up the phone and say let's be together and we also have two children from this marriage they're um, uh, in their 20s now so that was in their aspect um, a lot of time when we're making these decisions when relationships don't work. We overlook what the children or the child might be experiencing. And on our part, I think we, at least I can speak for me, I was blindsided to that for a good period of time. In fact, yesterday during a conversation, my son who lives in a different town, he asked very pointed questions. And actually, um, we're going to talk later today, all four of us, my daughter, my son, and ask for forgiveness from the children. Plain and simple. So it's, it's, it's not easy, but the joy you get from challenging yourself, you can't even expect. And spirituality is not sitting in a cave it is being out in the open being in relationships and if we run away from relationships and then i say that i am a spiritual person i'm going to ask if a swimmer claims that he's a great swimmer but he had never stepped into the water who do you believe that swimmer Wow, you say such powerful things that I never thought of. It's just, I have to take notes on everything that you say. But one thing, the overall picture, I did calligraphy, and one of the phrases that I did was, um, I am, if I am I because of you and you are you because of me, then I am not I and you are not you, which sums up what you said. And it's like, wow. <laughs> yeah. that's definitely putting everything in perspective and I certainly believe accurately because we we are different yeah. no two people can have agreement on everything and even before <laughs> I joke about sometimes I don't even agree with myself how many times <laughs> we are stuck in duality we are in conflict with ourselves. And that conflict we see outside of us. But when we are not in conflict with ourselves, not in duality, not operating at the level of a mind that is split, then we are at a better place. Absolutely. It's not possible to witness, say, anger in somebody else unless there's anger within you that you may not even be aware of. The same thing with being judgmental. So it's like it's everything that you say is something that I study and I 
focus unconsciously so that my life can flow instead of keep pumping up in the universe as to put situations in my life and say, hey, you didn't get the message. So here it is again. Let's see what you can do this time. All right. And and honestly, my children, they're both single. I always think I wish I had someone in my life who would have told me what does it mean to be in a relationship? What does it take for the relationship to be harmonious? And somehow that it's a huge decision for anyone. Yeah. And when we don't know what this really, I, I call it relationships are not bed of roses. Sure. Sometimes we expect after this, it's all honeymoon. No, it's not. It's real work. Uh, what what I mean by that is when you're dating someone, it's an inert atmosphere. Things are not happening. You're not facing any situations together. Mm. But when a situation arises, the real person comes out. It doesn't mean as anger, for example, the anger might have been inside that person, but until it doesn't get triggered, it does not come on the surface. Mm. It doesn't mean that person has changed. A lot of time we say, oh, you have changed. No, that um, aspect of their personality never surfaced because there was no situation, there was no trigger. That doesn't mean the person is bad. Even they might not have been aware that there is anger inside them. Right? Right. So it's not that people change over time. We really have to understand the mind, our own mind. If we understand our own mind, I can say right now here um, on this recorded video that there's not a single person in the life who has, I have loved always. My mind produces thoughts. Mm -hmm. But now I'm at a different place. I don't trust my own mind. <laughs> I say, you're going to say this in the morning and you're going to say this in the afternoon. Tell, tell me which one is the truth. The truth is everyone is living from their level of awareness. Everyone here is a mind, no exceptions. And by its very nature, mind is duality. Until we don't, now this is, I'm, I'm taking a little deeper here. This is a spiritual dimension, which essentially means I have to realize my true nature, my true self. And it is actually awareness, but I as awareness has manifested myself as this mind. So mind is my shadow, so is the body. And until we don't realize this, we will be going through these experiences we like or we don't like, it is going to happen. But if we accept both of them as the colors of the rainbow, means at the level of the mind, this is how the world operates. People agree with us, people will disagree with us. People will get angry, People will get attached. People means the mind. This is the innate nature of the mind, which has not realized that is actually awareness that is manifested at this mind. I'm going to use a metaphor here. The layers, sorry, the waves on the surface of an ocean. If you look at them from outside, you see the waves and the ocean disappears. Think of yourself as an observer looking down on the ocean. What do you see? The waves. The ocean is underneath it and we miss it. And now you as an observer, you move deep into the ocean. Now when you look up, what do you see? Only ocean. What seem like the waves is just the surface of the ocean that has these different contours and shapes. So in reality, that mind is nothing but surface of the awareness. And that movement 
is the mind. But if I keep rooted in myself, myself being the ocean, being the awareness, then I don't identify with these surface contours, the waves, or the mind. Then I am actually that peace, joy, and bliss, and my life becomes a charity. And that's the beauty, and that's an opportunity for every human being. We all are learning until we don't choose to learn about ourselves, through these relationships, we are missing a great opportunity. But if we are learning more about other people, then we have closed the door of this opportunity. So, so what I'm trying to say is, let us take our lessons through these pains, through these hurts, and through these rejections to open the greatest opportunity, that paradise, that my true self, is within me. Thank you. I was going to ask if there were words of wisdom you wanted to leave, but you just did that. <laughs> it just came out. Oh, yeah. It's I thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming back and sharing something so profound to go out. And I hope you were listening and got that when he and his wife remarried they've been together for 10 years not because everything flows perfectly all the time but because there's personal responsibility for who each of you is being in the relationship and that your son could have the comfort and wisdom to make the request he did and the love that has to be there i think is absolutely extraordinary and you and your family are a beautiful example of what can be. Thank you so much, Ali. This uh, I, I'm I'm blessed and honored for this opportunity to share um, some of my learnings, some of the challenges. But end of the day, I will say, never give up, because no matter what someone has told you, you are still beautiful, and that paradise you're looking for is within you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, D. Wallace calls it, find your love place within. Yeah. yeah. What is the best way for people to reach you? We'll put the link in the show notes. I really don't have a website at this point, but uh, um, I'm going to, uh, it's essentially my calling, I feel, to go out and share more of this. So I will have further information and you can share that with your audience. Uh, but they can definitely reach me at my email uh, for now. And you can put that in the link, uh, okay. prosperityfocuscoach.gmail.com. Uh, uh, Okie okay, dokie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being you. Thank you for sharing all that you continue to discover. And thank you, all of you, for being here with us today, for tuning in. And this might be one you want to go back to and listen to again. All the links will be in the show notes. Please go ahead and you can visit our Facebook group, join in, ask some questions there because we're putting some special events and offers in there. And you can listen to or watch any episode on our podcast site. And those links will also be in the show notes. Remember to enjoy, that's capital I-N, capital J-O-Y, every moment, because nothing happens out there and it all happens within. I look forward to being here with you next time.